Boom. You know that it's on up in this motherfucker, man. Shout out to the chat, man. Shout out to everybody tuning in, man. If you ain't smashed like already, man, make sure that you smash the fuck up out that like button, okay, family? It's been a lot of stuff going on. A few things I even chose, as I stated, not to even show on my channel. And I got reason. I got good reason for doing so. And as I said before, being that Sunflower has came out and exposed pure now we're seeing prior members, former members of the cult. Now they stepping out, which pretty much shows and then proves what their allegiance is and what their allegiance was before. OK, I mean, and I got to make sure, you know, that the beam team continue to add the fuck on. So I will be reaching out to each and every one of y'all, whether by phone, through IG chat, through uh, Zoom chat. Or, you know, continuously using the stream yard just to see what y'all think about everything. Because it's a lot that has been going on. So, I will be weighing in with y'all just to see what you think. Because a lot of times, for whatever reason, I may not be live, but I will make videos. Just as this video right here. Let's see. It's a given that you're going to have haters. It's a given that, that they don't want shit to come to the surface. It's a given that you got receipts out the ass <laughs> so i mean i'm not surprised i'm not surprised that shit is I mean, wild not. it's, it's wild as hell it's wild as hell but it's like um how can they say like that film is being like uh, uh when people have cataracts when they go out of that surgery that they want that film removed that's all you are you just removing the damn film like the end goal was to put him in jail yeah but you don't want you you really looking out for people's children like the initial reason why i got to follow you i'm telling you i have a niece that's young but they let her be on that phone too much like it wouldn't surprise me if she found somebody connected to carbonation and just feeding her the right bullshit and she fall right into it you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like they, they, it, people don't see the bigger issue. That's why they'll try to do that um, smoke and mirror shit by bringing up your past. Mm -hmm. Okay, exactly. And I noticed that too a little minute ago. You know, with people, whenever that I'm dropping these receipts on the coat, it's always about what I did and all this other stuff. I'm like, man, kick back and enjoy yourself. Watch the fucking show and don't destroy the messenger. Okay, please don't destroy the messenger. Well, motherfucker, you couldn't uh, destroy the message of the fuck if you wanted to. If any damn thing, just catch this fade with the message. That's all I'm telling you, man. Okay, mm -hmm. now it's all out. It's all out. Now, now is it my turn to talk? But every time it's your turn to talk, oh, he talks. He think he right. He think, no, 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 no. I sat and watched y'all try to crucify me on the internet. Uh, now let me tell you what I got. Right. <laughs> That's what that shit is. I ain't that's, that's a whole lot of fact right there. And it's like people before, you know, think, well, I, I think that they were throw the fuck off, you know, with believing that my main thing on the Internet was doxing people and talking shit to people. No, that's not it. It just so happened that there have been members of the cult that have been doxed. It's members of the cult that have been followed, pursued. But it just so happened that being that this is, in fact, the beam team, you know that it's always going to be a name, some negative shit that's surrounding the Make It Make Sense Network only by way of the years of information that's done been presented on social media. I ain't surprised by nothing. I'm just sitting back with my popcorn. Man, for whatever reason, you're hollering at this motherfucking point because, like I say, with True trying to go over there to Bego. And going live was, and stuff. Oh what you think about God. that? I really, I heard you say it, but I was sitting back like, they really are broke, broke. When you think you broke, you really, you really got some money you can go find somewhere. These motherfuckers be broke, right? And they trying to get a coin, and they try, they try. He tried to sit out him and Kendra. I don't know if they together or whatever, but they tried to just. They think staying under the radar and staying off the internet is gonna keep them out of trouble no like your whole life was on the internet jackasses i don't get it but the whole, i don't get it but the whole resurfacing though you know with him yeah. coming back out now where you think she at though so, somewhere sitting mm. waiting for him to tell her to go live mm, you, you feel what i'm saying and just think about it y'all this is the way that it took place last time 
you know, when Aaron, he made his appearance. And then shortly after, a couple months after, that's when we started seeing Kendra and the stuff that Kendra was talking about in reference to the coat. Now, I told you all before that I got all of that. I got all of it, the entire damn near four hour Instagram live, because I knew that it was going to be some stuff within that live stream that I, as well as yourself, would want to go back and then check out just to listen to, to see, you know, after, you know, time has passed on whether or not if we can figure out some stuff, because these people of the code, it's like they're going to halfway say some shit any motherfucking way you feel me. That's what they do. It's all going to be, they think they strategic. They think they're like 50. They all was around him too long. I'm telling you, if you ever came to Jersey, I know you said you had relatives up here. Right. The first time I saw a nature boy, I was like, nature boy look like a nigga that be in Penn Station homeless, begging. That's what he always looked like to me. So when you physically seen him on the internet, I was like, what the fuck was a feeding that generation that would gravitate to a nigga who look homeless? But let me tell you this though, right? I this was about I'm gonna give it three years ago. And three years ago, let me see, let me see. 2020. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna give it three, three and a half years ago. This is when Nature Boy and them was in Atlanta, but they was over Cookie's house. Now, mm -hmm. when that situation took place, we found out some stuff. Now, the lady Raquel that helped out Mariah when she was at the motel and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. After somebody heard Raquel talking and then seen who she was, a lady came forward and then said that her one time boyfriend, when she was staying in New Jersey, <laughs> she said, her right. one, Listen to me good. That one is she, time. Right. Her one time boyfriend that stayed in New Jersey was a dude that was dealing with Raquel and her and that woman had fell out over that dude. But what I'm telling you about New Jersey proves how Raquel and Nature Boy knew each other from New Jersey. Prior to, see, see, so much underhanded sneaky shit. Mm -hmm. Ew. And then don't forget too, you know, all of that stuff that was said about Willingboro, New Jersey. Remember that stuff? All that about New Jersey. Then remember when Jaguar Wright said that she had stayed in New Jersey and stuff, and we were making an attempt, you know, then to be able to put it together, questioning, asking ourselves, what would and what does those two people actually have in common? That was a thing at the damn time. Like, wait a minute, hold on, man. Like, what the hell is really motherfucking going on with 50 and a jet egg? Like, how in the hell, you know, what type of coincidence is this for both of these individuals to actually be from New Jersey? I ain't even going to front. Like I say, from the beginning, I kind of felt like it was some stuff going on. Not so much, you know, when it had to do with Jag. I just want to put that out there. Okay. But the New Jersey thing in general, once that we were able to make that connection, I said, wait a minute. Now, it's definitely some shit up in the motherfucking game uh, with New Jersey, uh, with Nature Boy. And the reason I say that, because when they did that 24-hour Airbnb, when they did that live stream, the Big Brother live stream, and, of course, the Money Man boss player herself, Boss player is a woman, but the money man provided that area, you know, so that they could have that footage streamed online. You remember that, right? So that's another connection with New Jersey as well, you know, as the guy in the yellow truck. You remember him, the yellow truck dude that gave them a ride and stuff back to Georgia. That's the person that I'm telling y'all when Rambo and Serenity, when they went to uh, Hawaii, that's the person seen on the photo the dude whose name is adonis adonis it just so happened is the brother of the guy in the yellow truck and one day i'm gonna do a video about the guy on the yellow truck i'm just stating it now so being that you hear it you'll be like okay a yellow truck yeah a motherfucking yellow truck and that's where new jersey comes within all of this stuff with 50 nature boy uh the bishops and of course stuff that he was doing in new jersey that led him to what we believe things that were said at one given time uh, with him being sent the fuck off. There were things that were said that he did as a child that had him sent the fuck off. 
Now, people may even question that shit, you know, to this day. We only heard it from one person and quite ironically out of all the people in the world. Only one person has stepped forward and given us an account about 50 Nature Boy as strangers. What the fuck did that even sound? Just think now. Because now True back out here. Of course, Sassy, he ducking because he know that we on his motherfucking ass. So I'm thinking now that True is, in fact, the person that's supposed to do the deflection. True is the person that's supposed to, you know, take our attention away from everything that's going on and shit. But that is not going to fucking happen. That's why I said we don't give a fuck about his videos being posted over here or streamed over here. That's for people that need some views. OK, we've heard enough from True thus far. OK, we're making an attempt to make this shit make sense years after the fact and continue information is provided every fucking day every day we learn something different we learn something new and what it does is it heightens and it increases our awareness our clarity with being able to decipher things that they've put on social media to other people that may have been confusing to other people that might have been misleading Okay, that's our job now. Okay, so we 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 here with this shit, and, and it's weird as hell to me. Out of all of this, how New Jersey has served as the ground, it has served as the place, as the mecca, and I ain't just talking about New Jersey Drive. Okay, like straight the fuck up. And for years, when I told people, I said, "Yo, I got cousins that stay in Newburgh, which is." basically New Jersey. It's New York, but across the water, then it's New Jersey. But I had cousins, you know what I'm saying? I got cousins that still stay in motherfucking Newburgh, right? And instantaneously, I told people, I said, yo, Nature Boy don't have no New York accent. I was like, I know he don't, because I've been around several New Yorkers. And the way that they enunciate certain syllables told me he's a pretender, he's an actor. That's why his vocal tone it continues. It tends to shift every now and goddamn then. Like you hear that that crooked lip motherfucker talking and shit. Then this motherfucker starts sounding like he from SoCal. That crooked lip motherfucker then sound like you know that he from where the locks. Like he from Yonkers and shit. And I'm just like, wait a minute. I thought you said that you was from Harlem because Jim Jones don't sound like Jada Kiss to me. That look at here. They wordplay different. Uh, the, their whole vocabulary in general, the whole swag, you know, it, for lack of better motherfucking words, is different. So it was easy to tell that Nature Boy ass wasn't from no motherfucking Harlem, New York. It wasn't shit Harlem about Nature Boy, but he wanted people to believe that he, you know what I'm saying, was from Harlem, New York. That is another evident fucking lie. And as you see now, years later, how we're able to place all of these things that we know now on the table and say, okay, all right, now that we know this, now that we know that, let's, you know, let's do in retrospect what this person or that person told us about the situation. And it makes it easier now. And for people that's tuning the fuck in that was lost with this whole situation dealing with the sex code, trust and believe me, man, we had to drop nothing but motherfucking receipts on this network. Kick your feet up. Like I say, man, this is another bill, and I will be reaching out uh, to even more people, man, just to see what your thoughts are in reference to all of this shit right here, man. Content for content for content for content, man. Let's go, I always man. think about it was just an adult daycare. When you said that shit, I was like, that remind me of fucking camp. It right. reminds me of camp. Right. And she, she's speaking in reference to carbonation when I made the statement, and I said that it's nothing but an adult daycare, y'all. Real talk. That's all of what that shit is, man. Yeah. What, dope. Like, that's the only reason. Why to just get away from life? We all want to do that, but, um, hello? Unfortunately, you're not able to do that, you know? If you're <laughs> in the real world, any motherfucking way, that's how you know they ain't in the real world. You feel me? These people are disconnected away from society. Like, their reality is just this. This is. And I, would I be, when you was on live, like, was it last night or night? know it because they was coming back to back because i be you know I, I wake up early as hell and watch some of them that's but right. you was like shit is is, is real uh, you was talking about walmart and i don't even shop in walmart but i was saying that shit the other day in, in the supermarket that i go to i was like how much that shit cost like shit is going up and up and up so they, then they be on here begging and begging and it's like who are these people that's donating to y'all 
That shit is wow. It's a hell of a question. That shit is wow. It's a hell of a question, yo. And you got to think about it. Like, who in the entire hell was the people at one given time that was sending carbonation, that was sending Nature Boy money, and what in the entire hell motivated them to be able to do that stuff? Like, that's so late to y'all. I don't understand. Even Cardi B said that shit one day when it was during the pandemic. She was like, I know my family is blessed to have me, but how the fuck is y'all making it out here in this shit? This was before PPP loans and all that shit. Like, how the fuck are y'all making it? Good ass question. And what she said in reference to Cardi B when Cardi B was trying to figure out, you know, like how people had money to send and how people was even surviving. You know, being that the cost of it, you know, inflation has fucking rise. You know what I'm saying? Every damn thing has went up, but people are still doing what it do. And that's a question that Cardi B had. That's a question that I had for years in reference to the people that supported the carbonation sex code and where they was getting this money from. And then I had another question in reference to if they were, in fact, mentally stable enough or were they mentally challenged, being that they were financing a motherfucking sex code and i'm telling you it is some shit that is going on and then you got to think about too you know not to go too far off the subject but shit man there's people out here that got jobs with titles you never even heard of before you feel me like oh yeah be standing in a big ass house but they'll tell you they do some other shit oh, be i like, know that's right <laughs> hey, no, i know it be some other shit, you know. So, like I say, man, 20, 2023 is lit. Like all of the stops are being pulled out, especially when it come down to this motherfucking coat, because the nervousness is real right now. You hear me? It's and real. every time you put that damn tab of the Basmino in the chat, I be dying. Oh yeah, be fucking man, she be tuned in. Tab the Basmino be eating <laughs> snacks, listening to me fucking these niggas up. I already know what it is. And I know after all this shit blow over, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to I'm 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 run down on it. You hear me? Like, straight I up. I would, too. Yeah. I I'm going I'm to just let her know. Like, you know, I'm going to go up there, you know, and, and just introduce myself and say, you know, this is who I am. I don't know if you know who I am, but I just wanted to meet you and let you know. What do you, what do y'all think, yo? Like, I appreciate it. Yeah. You know, the way that you went about handling the sex code leader, like straight up, like it's, it's and, and, got to. and by the same and by the same token, you would kind of not you wouldn't. I would. I'll say I would kind of appreciate a thank you. You understand what I'm saying? Word. Because a lot of the information that she's using, she's going to have to use during his trial came. Just like Sasha for God, you know, she used one of Sasha for God's videos, the video uh, with Velvet and Nate Terry. When we at the time were viewing it as if that on a together level as a team that they made an attempt to provide information for the continued incarceration of Elysio Bishop came from you. And that's what's real. And you know, <laughs> it did. as far and then too another thing too, I think that like even when you say the information came from me it don't make a damn if it's a video that came from somewhere else the people posting mm. them videos are not giving up the commentary they not explaining like how all of these events like connect together not at all not at all and that's the that's the one thing when, when i what day was that my day is one today is monday so it had to be yesterday or the day before when you started playing no it was it was it was basically when you started fucking with um fucking up sassy's ass playing them mm. old videos right. like you were saying today it's people that's new they don't know and then some people are coming thinking you being too harsh no 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 no. pump your brakes and get out your feelings real quick let me show you something <laughs> let me show, let me show you that because y'all don't know everything y'all don't know everything well i'm gonna say this whenever you ever mm. see anybody say anything like that that's anti to what i'm talking about or explaining Man, mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you like this: if if, it, if it's that, if it, if it's that eye catching, take a screenshot of it and then just hit me off with it. Other than that, don't even worry about them because I know that their responses, the stuff that they type in, is mm -hmm. coming from an angry place that's displaced only because the cult leader's locked up. That's what it is. So I don't even really mm -hmm. pay no attention. You know, I I know mm -hmm. exactly what what that is, what that stems mm -hmm. from. And they are people uh, who feel as if that they've lost something from a person that didn't give them anything. The only thing that person did 
will serve uh, as monetary entertainment on the internet on the internet that's it that's all mm -hmm. that 50 did that's all that mm -hmm. he did he entertained them they they were able to live out they wildest most ignorant ass fucking fantasy <laughs> <laughs> <That's what I'm laughs> watching this movie that's how they, they exist today through that thing man that's it <laughs> But wait, but world, listen, uh -huh. listen, listen. What was you really thinking when, <laughs> like, I know when I first started watching um, Nature Boy, like I got into it, then I pulled away, then I found your page, and then I started really getting into it. But I was telling my friend one day, I was like, nah, this nigga doing dope or pills or something. When they got back to Atlanta, Way before Sonetta, when he was doing with the white paint and shit on his face. Yeah. When he started changing uh, and uh, starting do, <laughs> doing the cat shit and all that, what was you saying like to yourself? Like, what 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 is he smoking on? Like that shit was crazy to me. Nah, it wasn't even my that wasn't even my thought because I've been noticed times prior to now uh a change uh in his, you know, in his in his personality and believe it or not i've been around people and they've changed like that too you know and mm. shit, i done been around a woman before man just off a sip of a sip of damn beer she be gone you feel me like <laughs> so seeing 50 it was normal i just think that well my first initial thought was damn he down bad as fuck because i'm like <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Cause Miss Me had messaged me, man, like probably about like a week before that. Then people kept coming to my chat, putting shit in my chat, and I'm like, "Yo, stop talking about Nature Boy and shit." So, you know what I'm saying? Miss B hit me up and was like, "Well, you gotta see what this nigga doing. This nigga wilder now." So I'm like, "Word." He was like, "Yeah." And when I seen him with that goddamn shoe polish on his face, I said, "Boy, this nigga gone, boy." I said, "This nigga gone, boy." Oh my God. And I just, I, I, I just strongly felt like that that was a means for him to get some views. I feel like that was his only way of getting views at the time. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then I started thinking about all that shit with Sauce Poppy, and I just was like, "Yeah, it mm -hmm. happened. It happened." You know what I'm saying? Because, mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, and that's the thing too that I noticed the most. Like when Nature Boy was chilling with Sauce Poppy, I just was trying to figure it out because for years, you know, he spoke the knowledge as people would believe. And I'm like, okay, you in Atlanta and shit, so you should be able to be around your peoples. You know what I'm saying? They should be checking for you and stuff. And by me saying his peoples, I would have thought that it would have been people from the said conscious, awoke, fake, woke a community. I would have expected those people. And then on the other hand, I was sitting back and I said to myself, hmm, where's all of the, where's all of the gay guys at? Where are all of the homosexual exotic dancers? Where are all of the men that be doing something strange for a piece of change? You know, I was thinking about this stuff. I was like, man, something is up. I'm like, he's spending a lot of time with these guys that's in the street, with these guys, you know, that pretty much has like a street persona. And when I peeped that, I said, yeah, 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 he definitely into some different stuff and drugs. Drugs definitely <laughs> did play a factor within all of that stuff. Cause I'm like, yeah, 50 is acting different. He acting different than a motherfucker. Just like when I told y'all the story about first, you know, hitting the K2 bullet and how powerful that the K2 bullet was. I was sitting back and saying to myself, like, damn, do Sauce Poppy got this nigga on that bag? Or 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 is he on that Molly? Or is he on that too? And, you know, just looking at nature, boy. And you just have to look at how arrogant that he is. I definitely can see. Yeah, I can see without a shadow of a doubt when he was hitting dude up. And I think even when him and dude was around each other, that dude might have been doing drugs that might have been unfamiliar to Nature Boy. He may not have ever experimented with that level or with that type of drug. And for whatever reason, I think that Nature Boy just went ahead and did it. And I think he went ahead and did it by way for acceptance, trying to be cool, 
uh, making himself out to be somebody that he wasn't. You would have thought for years, as long as what Nature Boy was in another damn country with him being in the tropics and shit, you would have thought that this motherfucker would be back in the States going to all of the the natural, uh, raw, organic uh, incense shops and wherever that they sell onks and related materials, items that you've seen featured that people within the conscious community has spoke on. But that shit right there didn't even happen. <laughs> what you seen was Nature Boy hanging around people that wanted to be in the streets. And that's when I knew. And I said to myself, yo, if he's doing that stuff, I said then, I said them women doing it too. The women on it too. Them women throwing the fuck off too. And I was just looking at it and I was saying, damn, yo, if he got the women doing this shit, it ain't going to be long before he get locked the fuck up. Because I always take into a, an account a person's sensitivity level when they doing whatever drugs, when they drinking whatever alcohol. And I know that they do have a breaking point. I know that they do have a limit before intoxication. I know that they do have a, you know, a limit before that the paralysis of fatigue even weighs on their body. Straight up. So I'm like, I know the women can't handle whatever strong drugs that he's doing. But hey, for a whole live man, it's different. And you also got to take in a, into account how people act differently when taking drugs. It doesn't affect everybody the same way. And the stuff that we seen, Nature Boy dancing in the middle of the street with, with a goddamn toboggan on and stuff, no shirt with them black jogging pants on, with no socks on or fucking shoes. Oh yeah, I knew it had to be some strong ass fucking drugs. Uh, like, like I said, I didn't shit. too much go too deep into you know, my experience, but I did speak on it briefly with my homeboy about two weeks ago. And it was like, you know what I mean? When I was locked up, you know what I'm saying? Like we was, we was smoking K2, you feel me? Because mm -hmm. like the COs and shit, like they was real ruthless. Like them niggas was mm -hmm. trying to bag motherfuckers up for anything. So, you know, you smoking that synthetic bullshit, it ain't gonna show up in your urine. So it's mm -hmm. like, you know, being in there, shit, I might pay ten dollars and get the equivalent of half a joint that I'ma roll about nine <laughs> pins out of that motherfucker. You just imagine how small that shit is. Oh so, my god. So me, I got like a high I got a high sensitivity level. You feel me? Like I can drink like mm -hmm. a whole I can drink out of a case of beer, I probably can drink like nineteen of them and I'm still cool. Probably I heard you say that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I like, heard you say that about your stuff. grandmother and stuff. Yeah, liquor house, you know what I'm saying? I grew up in a liquor mm -hmm. house. So I've been drinking beer since I've been young, so I drink a beer like a soda. Like, that's why I don't even really drink like that, because I be mm -hmm. abusing that shit, you feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah, shit is real. Yes, I do. But yes, that, I do. I used to drink crazy, too, but I used to try to drink old man wine i used right. to drink night train and mad right. dog 2020 <laughs> just to go somewhere and throw up <laughs> i get it i get it i get it. i get it a million percent <laughs> just like what the fuck was you thinking like i don't even like liquor no more that's the crazy shit i used to drink all crazy I, when i was on vacation i didn't have a drop of liquor not a drop now nah, i wild. smoked the entire time oh, <laughs> I for smoked sure. the entire the entire time i was for there show for <laughs> show you know what I'm saying? I would have been on some old next level other shit, but you know. Oh my god! Yes, it is what it is. So you got to oh think. Oh my god! So you got to think, and and not to cut you off, but the entirety uh -huh. of the time that Fifty was in those different countries, see, he was up under the influence then, and that's what I'm telling you about. You know, certain stuff he used to do and say. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. for me, I I just I don't know. I just I pay real close attention to character, not the person, mm. it's just the character. You feel me? Like I'm always mm. trying to, you know, have receptiveness to what type of person or people that that, that I'm around, you know, mm -hmm. before I even say something to him. So with 50, I noticed the type of person that he was, like when he used to talk a lot, when he used to start cursing and stuff. See, he a person that can't, you know, control his drink. And I know mm. he would smoke how his speech would become slurred and then how he wasn't able to stay focused on topic. 
Mm-hmm. And that's how I knew. So with him being in the States and, you know, him getting that stuff from sauce and them and shit, I knew what happened to him because mm-hmm. like I was going to go into like my situation and what my situation was is crazy. But, you know, for me smoking them little pen ass joints that was like nothing in prison, I didn't know what the effect, like the mm-hmm. full effect of it would be. So me and my mm-hmm. homeboys was together and my homeboy had a blunt of K2 and passed it to me. And I hit it twice and fell on my face. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. Me? So Yeah, because he right. had it in a blunt. That's right. a whole, a whole nother level. Whole nother animal. Mm-hmm. So you got to think of what type of hallucinogenic that 50 was on when he was out there in the rain that day. You just got to think about that shit. <laughs> Drop the goddamn phone. Mm. When I tell you, if I lived in Straight that cul de sac, <laughs> man, that was the funniest shit. And when you was commentating on fucking what's his name? What's his name? What's his name that go with the girl? How rude? What's his name? Oh, you talking about Musa? When you was talking man. about Musa's ass when he came back in there. Oh my God, man! That Daddy, nigga. Can we come back in? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you have to tie away for? Trying to do the dance moves and shit. Man, that nigga was ready to go. But he was looking at fifty ass though. That's the only thing kept him out sure there. Sure was. The Illumina Four was out there, motherfucker. Man, that shit was crazy. That why I said like. So was sassy. Right, mm-hmm. and and see mm-hmm. these these people would be in hopes that that we would forget about certain stuff. That's that's generally it. You know, they, they wouldn't want us to, mm-hmm. yeah, man, they don't, you know what I'm saying? They don't want other people to know just like, just like Aaron. See, that whole four hours and 22 minutes that him and his baby mama, because I ain't going to call her his wife, but when him and uh, Sheba was on there, man, I got mm-hmm. the whole jank, the entire jank. And when they was with the was said, Nah, when they was on Which Instagram. One? Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. 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 See, that shit. I, I... Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, that shit when they was over there with Nene and shit. Nah, man, that ain't, that's blowing smoke. When he sat up there with old girl, he know they said a whole bunch of shit. Mm. Mm-hmm. And for lack of better terminology, Man, he was trying to hold like cock block Sheba from going in because you can tell, like, you know, once she, you know, feels some kind of way about something, man, she she kind of hold on to it. And mm. yeah, and she had started really, she had really started pushing them buttons. But one thing about Sheba is that Sheba never explained when Velvet was going to jump on her. You ain't never mm. talk about that. You know what I'm saying? They do, they do pick, pick, pick and choose mm-hmm. what part of store they do. Like, and like you said the other day, none of them actually will denounce 50. You know what I'm saying? They they never no, they all got an allegiance to, it. like you said, there is some type of oath that they all damn it took, and they scared of him for some reason. He can't get to them. He he got them thinking like he got some mob ties or something. Like, why won't y'all say something? And, and 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 quite honestly, yo, I don't even think it's that they think that. I think that the reason why they wouldn't go against him or say anything about him is because of the things that they are in debt to with him. That's what I think. And I mean, uh, as far as uh, images and positions that they wouldn't want to be seen in, and I think, mm. too, when they were up under the influence, possibly – alcoholic influence mixed with ayahuasca nature mm-hmm. boy had them doing stuff too and like you could stuff. tell mm-hmm. yeah that's the stuff that you could there. tell when they was in when 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 remember that party when when zoka came facts remember when zoka came and how they was all and it's mm-hmm. all like we want we we know the new girl is here but i'm trying to keep uh chief's attention so they was drinking, and who knows who took um what's Ash, what is it ayahuasca? It's ayahuasca, right? That ayahuasca. Mm-hmm. That party says it all, cause who knows once the cameras went off, what the fuck went down? But, and they so young, right? 
Mm-mm-mm. We we you think the flunkies is, is at Cookie's house? Oh for sure. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Oh for sure. Oh for sure. It could be a number of places, but definitely Cookie at this time. And they done been there too. And like I say, Cookie's address is on that paperwork too through that motion, man. And you know, it's it's listed, you know, her name, first and last name. So mm. right. So then that oh, company, go ahead. that company, uh, which would be a lawn service company, that mm-hmm. that guy, that light skinned dude, that's fifty so cool with, some kind of way. I don't know. I don't know if him and Cookie related, but mm-hmm. that's the address that they stated. Right. You know where fifty, the groundskeeping service and stuff like that's where they said that Nature Boy was going to be staying at. Would be staying it's at. Work. That was, mm-hmm. you know, with his terms of, of him making bond and being released. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely something with that, too. But let me ask you this question. See, now it's funny you call me because once you start showing them old ones, it it bring my mind back to something. Mm-hmm. What do you think was up with um, Efru's mother and grandmother and baby mother and all of them being at that cookout? That's some shit. You say what? what was up with that? Yeah. I don't know whether or not if it was somebody's birthday or if it was even to the effect that Nature Boy simply invited them over to show them, like, hey, you know, we don't have nothing to hide, et cetera. You know, we straight. We got somewhere to stay. We ain't in the jungle. They can make it here. I think that's what it was about. But as far Mm -hmm. as Javine, I think that he wanted Javine to come to dispel whatever myth that had been put out on social media about them. Mm. And that's why he wanted her there so everybody could be around. And then she will be like, well, OK, well, it really ain't that bad. Like what people uh, have stereotyped, you know, this environment to be. They got to be at the Javine is the one who got her ass whooped. He fucked up her face and all that. No, that's Maisha. Maisha, damn, that's what I had confused. Yeah, okay, that's okay, okay, okay. Cyrus, I, uh, yeah. See, I had Javine, it confused because I was like, I wouldn't be nowhere near this motherfucker. But go ahead. Sorry. See, nobody even titled a video talking about that because nobody even knew what Javine looked like. I showed her a few times, but people seen that video, people seen that live stream of 50 number, didn't even connect her to all of that stuff. So think Efru's mom, her grandmother. Uh, Javine, Javine, Mama, all, all them was okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Javine, uh, I think that was Javine, Mama boyfriend that was out there in the back and shit. And they, you know, they was all because wasn't he playing with the bait? He was playing with um yeah, little um, chess and shit. Uh, oh, I, I remember, I remember. Dog, shit, you feel me? Yep. Right. Yep. yep. And see, damn. When when all of that stuff happened, that was of the gradual transition of people forgetting about his play sister. Yes, right. yes, yes, yes. You know that it just disappeared. Like it was not. <laughs> vanished. He vanished. And when me and Miss Meek were going in on that shit, it's like people ain't really understand that shit. You feel me? And shout out to the chat, man. Shout out to everybody tuning in, man. If you ain't smashed like already, make sure that you smash the fuck up out that like. I tell you. She what got are the you really think talking from? about and disappeared. The what? I'm sorry. She get she she got the bag. The solo I was talking about the bag, and she disappeared. Yeah, wait, you said that brother, I must piss my pants. The bag. I, I, I think I think too that they were able to use her social security number, her personal information, and I think you know that they were able to acquire a loan. And I think her reason for being there it served its purpose, and then she dipped. The bag. <laughs> the bag. Oh my god. It's so many damn twists and turns. Oh yeah. It's a it's a, it's a never ending saga, man. Just filled with receipts. There are in fact uh, incidents that took place that we questioned for years. Now it just seems that it's all coming. It's coming out now, man. 2023 definitely is the year for it, man. And I'm happy. I'm elated. Uh, look at him, man. I'm beyond fucking satisfied that you all are here to experience it, whether you on the replay or you set your ass off in them damn bushes or not. You think they coming for so long? I think, 
I don't think that they're that they're actually going for him. I think that they'll continue to watch him because mm-hmm. if they was thinking anywhere further than what I've thought thus far, it would be in their best interest to wait because he's not even the he's not even the person to be going after right now. He ain't even the person, you know. Well, I put it to you like this: he mm. he's the person good. Uh, with negative dollars at this time. That's right. Oh, you talking about with carbonation? I'm talking about with Mm-mm. um, Velvet's child. Repeat the question again. I'm talking about. Uh, do you think that that uh, like Stifus or anybody is going to be coming after him for what came out about um, little Ellie and her tooth? And see, that's another reason why people was thinking that Sassy bounced and why Sassy went back to Mexico. And him putting hands on them children. Think about it. Because you know that within the history of all of this, whenever something took place that was catastrophic, that Nature Boy, and even when Velvet was with Nature Boy, they both would just simply disappear. Just think about it. When Joy tried to leave, Nature Boy was gone. They had to call him on the phone. When Nubian crashed the van, what happened then? Nature Boy was no damn where to be seen. The whole situation with Mama Dia, Nature Boy wasn't on the scene. And that's the reason why Rambo and Keys moved the body. Nature Boy indebted all of them folk together at the damn time. You mean from her family or just somebody in general? Well, didn't... Well, once Velvet said that, right? Uh In that text message to Sunflower, right? That's her name? Right. Mm Mm-hmm. And shout out to Sunflower. Do you think that once the wheels get turning that they would try to investigate him or you don't think it'll really come out to be much? Boy, look at here. I'm trying to damn told you. And even with her question that she just asked in reference to that being the reason why Solar bounced and if, you know, certain stuff that's done came out now, if it would pretty much speed up the ball or to push the course, you know, within starting an active investigation because people have waited for quite some time right now for another investigation. People have sat back for some months now and wondered when they all was going to be questioning about them PPP loans. But people like myself, man, I already know when whoever, because I ain't saying no names, but when whoever provided that information, I don't think that they left out that part. And as I said before, the same way how PPP loans are, in fact, forgiven. There are people that have been caught, that have been connected and that are a part of 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 certain criminal acts where those criminal acts have even been forgiven. Take it back to the 80s when they used to speak in reference to the damn get out of jail free card because he's not in the States anymore. I think it's 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 possible. Uh. If it's stressed, you know, by Velveeta, you know what I'm saying? But I don't think, you know, like I said right now, that they even thinking about him. If anything, Mm -hmm. I think that they watching him to see what's going on. And I think they'll eventually figure out who the other people are that's connected to Solar and how he's continuing to live in Mexico, flying Mm -hmm. from state to state, country to country, and the whole fucking nine. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. That Chinese guy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And, and it's gonna go. I was all, it's gonna go all the way back. Like I said, you follow the money. Mm-hmm. It's gonna go all the way back to that to that to that crocodile mouth dude up there in Philadelphia. Uh huh. <laughs> Swamp people. Oh my gosh! Yeah. I was dying when you had you had nice on it today. I was dying. I was dying. Man, that nice. I remember truth. when you went live when she was outside his house. I remember that shit. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh I was God. lit. I was. I was. Kind of, we we was lit at the time when she was outside of Gaga Goo Goo house. What I had showed on the third shift. I think it was third shift. I just know it was one of the streams that I actually took down. But when Niza was out there talking and stuff. Yeah, Gaga Goo Google, he was cussing her out, disrespecting her in front of the cops, people in the comments. They were saying, yeah, that's, you know, normal activity when it come down to Philadelphia cops any damn way. Man, listen, I'm trying to tell you, man, that whole nicer shit was crazy, man. I was kind of upset about that. And the reason, the reason I was upset about that damn situation, because I could tell 
aside from what she was saying while they was talking to her, the cops and stuff. And I could tell that um that Niza was on some shit, man. You know what I'm saying? That shit ain't cool, oh, man. Yeah, you know she saying? was rambling. Yeah, she was rambling. It's like whatever. My father was. is yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Rich of Canada and stuff. And it was obvious that she was up under the influence of something. And the attributor to all of that is none other than Nathaniel. Nate, the immortal dude, immortal, immortal crocodile teeth like him. He is the person that's responsible responsible for that, just as he is the person responsible for his his baby mother putting his hands on Nisa when she had that that speed knot on the left side corner of her head and stuff. And and it was bruised up and stuff. Shout out to Patricia. Patricia had peeped that shit when that motherfucking head was scuffed up. See, he is the person. Because if it wasn't for him, his baby mother as well as her wouldn't have shared the same space for that event to take place. And Niza pretty much explained it, how the girl did and stuff. You know, she was pretty much in and out, to me anyway, of consciousness. And whatever drugs that she got, I think she got them from him. I think he was the supplier. And just like how Nature Boy had concubines, people that appeared to be zombies and stuff for years, you seen the exact same damn thing with nice. Well, at least hopefully you had a thought because there's just no way in the hell that a woman looking like her would even be with a guy like him unless that he had some motherfucking money. That would be the only way that she would be with a man like him but then think about for years when you've seen other men who didn't pretty much fit the bill with that woman, what their use was with that woman or what their connection was with that woman, aside from being a friend, family, etc. cetera. Uh, if this was a multiple choice fucking question, I would have to fill out. Uh, I- I'm going to say I'm going to have to hit C. And the reason why I'm going to pick motherfucking C, because I would think that they would be pimping the woman out or using her and we clearly proved that nathaniel obviously was pimping her out by giving her providing her somewhere to stay and by her having no other means to make money with what she could be doing there because she told me that he got her a job and the job that he got her she worked inside of an exotic dancer club so what do you think that she was doing i mean because i don't think that you know, she's a thicky thick girl, nor would she be a slim petite girl. So what could she have been doing uh, within that exotic club? All questions that you pretty much know the damn answer to. But at the same time, it goes to show how these individuals work. How did they play this shit out here on social media and for quite some time now? How people were not able to make those connections. And Niza was a person uh, connected to abuse. I think that she was misled. Uh, and I also think like on a on a on a on a deeper psychological level uh, that she might have even to a degree been tortured, but caught up in the Anita Baker rapture of love and stuff for that dude. Now, how could she even have loved him? People love people for various reasons. So we can't you know, point the finger and say that it was one particular thing. But centrally, there was a motivating factor. And don't think for a second that there are some women that attribute love as sex. They think love and sex is the same damn thing. It's equated the same to them. So just think, Niza was in a relationship with dude. So what else do you think was going on? Huh? I mean, okay, all right. Uh, Richard Canada and shit, it's like when she said all that shit, man, I'm like, whoever the hell... And I had people contact me, but I'm just like, whoever in the hell that like really know her, like in real life or personal life, like they can tell that she definitely was up under the influence. Okay. That that was mm-hmm. not the actual person right there. I don't think even I don't think at the time, man, when she was out there with the cops when he was arguing with her, that definitely would not be the person that people would say that they knew aforetime. I just do not see it. And the reason I don't see it <laughs> Because no, that person would not have been acting out of their heads at the time that whoever knows her in real life. And I've seen her on camera, uh, peeped her personality traits. And 
she would fit the bill being one of the women that would be approachable by somebody like Nature Boy and one of the women that would definitely be influenced by somebody like him with him constantly over talking her soft, meek voice, just as other women that we've noticed. And I told y'all I need to do a video on the voice because let's discuss the voice in brief. And I told y'all Mariah Lynn Kelly that took her mom's life. She had a soft voice, just like I am. That same soft voice that Aya has, just know as well as understand, right? Niza has the exact same tone of voice. And then if you think about that soft voice, like Aya and Niza, then think about Sunflower. And think about how soft that Sunflower's voice is. I heard people put in the comments, oh, I like to hear her voice. Oh, I could just listen to her. You see, it's certain types of men that recognize these character traits and fully they'll take advantage of a woman. They'll attribute that tone of voice as being a sign of weakness or a sign that they're able to approach, to subdue, and to basically destroy a woman, mind control a woman, put straight MK Ultra on a woman just from having a whole lot of conversation with her. Even if right. she was upset. And at most times, those women... You know, it's expected that they might even have an issue of a paternal fatherly issue in some degree. And that man at most times would even feel that slot play that role as being a protector, a provider. But when a woman is able to protect herself and provide for herself, the, the effectiveness of running that G, it just don't work, man. It's no fucking good, just as you clearly seen when it came down to Justin and Sunflower. That's right. When Pure tried to run that game on Sunflower, it didn't work because, see, she had her own. Now, if she was a woman that simply was dependent on a man, she might have even went for the stuff that he said. Whatever bogus or lame excuse that he gave, she would have went for that stuff without even fucking checking him. Said because... I was, you know, I was paying close attention to how she was enunciating words and it was going in and out, in and out. Right. And it was to me uh, what the way I got it was that he's just one of those persons that didn't anticipate her still being awoke. I'm going to put it to you like that. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That shit crazy. This whole fucking thing is crazy as hell. Just when you think you you, you done seen, you be like, uh, no, nothing really surprised me. You be like, golly, what the fuck? Man, it's almost... like you be looking for an ending, but it's never going to be one. Sorry, what you say? Uh-uh. Nah, you on point. Nah, I'm saying. Yeah. You, it's a never it, ending man. story. It's, it's never fucking ending. It's, it's, and it's, and when you say never ending, I'll say this. It's not so much as a never ending story, but it'll forever be characters that want to play these parts, that want to fill these roles. Because as far as them, the a hey, look at here, the demise of their coat and the coat alone definitely is coming to a screeching halt. But just like the members that you see of the University of Cosmic Intelligence, whether they admit it or not, the people that follow mm. Shah Jamal, right. they pretty right. much are within the image and likeness of nature boy at this point for sure mm -hmm. i stand but up but what i mean by never ending i think that the coat yeah i feel like the coat is 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 being dismantled as well but what i mean by that oh. is the whole i'm I, i'm i'm big on females knowing what the fuck is going on with their bodies you understand what i'm saying y'all so dense and y'all making babies and shit and when nene was over there with him looking all googly eyed and and, and when you started mentioning her dress and what she had on and shit, and I'm like, you dumbass, you'll sit here and fuck him, knowing he been with a dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, she'd be dumb enough to get pregnant again by him. I could see that shit. I don't think that Nene's strong enough to even be around him like that. I just don't. That's real shit. I don't think that that's real shit. And and then, you know, what was just stated, question that as well. If in fact when they were together, if they had sexual intercourse, if he could have possibly impregnated her again, it wouldn't be the first time that we've heard of something like this or seen something like this within a lifetime. 
not just saying from the aspect of a man simply just being a baby daddy, but a man just, you know, wanting to do that, you know, being horny, being in the moment. <laughs> like straight up and i don't even know whether or not if that shit even crossed your damn mind or not at this i think point. I, and velvet mad as hell because the money ain't come her way you understand what i mean she, it just seems oh, go ahead yeah you say it seems what now I, it seems like nene would sleep with him just to be up underneath a man but not really caring about herself sexually you know what i mean you know that he likes men why would you want to sleep with him again she was looking at him all googly eyed when he came in and got all dolled up and spent your money to get a hotel room because you know goddamn well he didn't have really probably didn't have a lot of money when he first came to her or he probably was playing broke he seemed like that type of dude too or have money and play broke but when he when you when you going through all these changes for a person who spit in your face, who who didn't really want to fuck with you, had you looking crazy out in Mexico, why are you sitting here talking about forgiveness? You could forgive a motherfucker and not be around him. That's so true. That is so you have true. That is, and that's where co-parenting actually comes in. Have a child by him? Yes, you could. You, you, you he took forever to come be around. I don't know. It's just maybe I'm getting old. I don't know. <laughs> fucking no they just do shit i would never fucking do i would never fuck with a nigga like that never like never you show me any type of gay vibe i, I mean you like your gift they maybe that's what it is their gift of discernment is null and fucking void <laughs> maybe that's what it is they don't and by their gift you know by their discernment being null and void i think it was due to the absence of other women in their lives other older females in their lives who could have gave them a, a, a course of path to follow. And by them not having that older female, quite ironically, they listen to the cult leader tell them about themselves as if a man could explain the process of a pregnancy all the way down to, you know, deportating a child, which is impossible. It's no way that that can happen. So being that they being that those women allow for Nature Boy to run that old school 1992 game on them, being that they allow for that to happen, they did so because the majority of them wasn't even born in 1992. If you think about it, as crazy, you, know, you, you could just look at Soul up like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Maybe I got I be around too many women. I'd be like, nah, she goofy as hell. Let me start talking to I her say, and find some some women are not able to do that some women like straight up yo they don't they don't know about it so as far as the imagery or the expectation you know of a man you know, or seeing the character traits of a man they haven't had it so they had those character traits being displayed mm -hmm. to them through movies and through songs so that's what their mm -hmm. general ideal of a man is finding out what she don't what her mother hasn't told her i do that shit all day every day that is try to pump her That'd, I do. I do it wow. all day. That'd be dope if more women, you know, were to do that because, you know, it's it's beyond difficult uh, having discernment today, you know, with younger people and how that they were raised. 2023 is crazy, especially with that. Yeah. Like 18 to 30. 18 I mean, on 30. my nieces, my little niece, my nephew. I don't I just be asking all types of questions. I want to see where they head at. Just like my nephews that's 10 years old is more on point than my 14 year old niece. I promise you that. Wow. That shit is wild, but it's a fucking reality now. And I'm thinking younger people are getting dumbed down by the shit that's on social media. Shit that they don't even see no harm in because their parents, rightfully so, they don't even know what the fuck to look for. And that's how shit done got to this point. So it's a lot of stuff that's done slip through the cracks. Uh, it's a lot of stuff that's not being discussed, not being spoken on. And then you have like these pseudo teachers out here on social media that's, you know, reinforcing thoughts and ideas and, of course, condoning and supporting some of the weirdest shit stuff that you would think would be discussed, you know, parent to child. That's the level of conversation that I can see visible that most of the young people like in this era in time, which they lack, and it could possibly be their parents being at work 
or just their parents not being that actively socially involved with their children and their children simply have, you know, took the higher road. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit, they ain't here or whatever. Fuck it. I'm going to play the game. And that's considered the motherfucking higher fucking road. That's why you have adults, you know, that would that would sit back for hours and then simply play the game. Whereas the time that they've used simply to play the game, teens and young adults who are interested in the game, five to ten minutes, whenever that they see fit, they should just start popping up just sporadic, just questions, you know. Hey, what do you think about God? Who is God to you? You know, just asking them questions like that. What do you think about HIV? Have you ever heard of HIV? You know, just asking them different questions and stuff. What's your thoughts on guns? What do you think about guns? You ever wanted to own a gun? You know, stuff like that. You got to ask them those questions because, as I stated before, some parents lack reason and for better judgment or whatever. You know, those parents simply have been rocked to sleep, rocked to sleep by things that was going on in their personal life that they didn't get to have those deep and personal, direct discussions with their children. And the children, as I stated before, the media fully engulfed them. And if it wasn't through the media, it was the music that started to teach and then educate our children. That's why the root of all of these so-called awoke individuals, you will hear after their message has been branded, then they'll come out exclusively and then, you know, want to then push their rap talent, their rap career. Whereas in this world, we got enough rappers. We got enough thus far, and I enjoy the music from all of them. Some of them I don't like, but, you know, I enjoy it, you know, because it's a vibe. But we can't, you know, for once or forever, you know what I'm saying, fall victim to MK Ultra. And we also, you know, got to pay close attention to how did they put it within certain songs and the hinted suggestions that are within movies, uh, TV shows. We definitely have to be vanguards, you know, for our young adults. Shout out to the chat, man. Shout out to everybody tuning in, man. If you ain't smashed like already, man, make sure that you smash the fuck up out that like button. I know you heard as of recently that True done got back on Bigo. <laughs> so he back to being True. I don't think he's Aaron Dixon on Bigo. You feel me? So he back to being True and stuff. But back when he changed his name to My Name is Aaron on Instagram, and he was going in, him and his wife was going in and stuff. I just want to go back to that era in time. That's, you know, I just want to go back there because it was a lot that was said and those things that were said for whatever reason, we would have thought after he said those things that that was that, you know, it was it, you know, it was over with, you know, but he's back out here now. I don't know what he got going on, <laughs> but let's get into this part now when he was saying what he had to say in reference to the sex cult leader and uh, things not only that he despised, but in a jokingly sarcastic type manner, he was pretty much criticizing the sex cult leader. Obvious signs then that there was some stuff that was going on. They came to be with a group of people. And of course, he touched on the women. Who were portraying themselves online to be a peaceful group. Queen Liz, they're living in La La Land. They have locked themselves in an interpretation of reality of reality as told by the cult leader. I was in the courtroom. Here's the thing. Here's the funny thing. And I came to this conclusion watching the videos. At one point, I didn't want to watch the videos, but I'm, it's so easy to dismantle the videos, not only from an outside perspective, but I was there. So I'm watching y'all break down the videos and y'all wasn't even there so it's much easier for me to break down the videos because i know y'all lying i was there poor shake couldn't even handle the rent not being paid what makes y'all think y'all can handle a rape false imprisonment and prohibition on sexually explicit transmission charges you couldn't even beat a civil case you owe 12 racks and you placed it upon yourself thinking that you were doing something honorable for the cult leader. Mm. 
so that's the receipts right there that we got with Aya and Aya owing twelve thousand dollars because of that situation with Boy Twan and the negligence of the sex cult leader at twenty nine ninety three Arbor Chase. He ch he chose not to pay the rent. You owe them people twelve racks. So Aya is the one that owes the bread. The cult leader put it on you. Wake up, and I now I'm I feel like y'all feel the cult leader had you go in the courtroom and represent him so that those twelve thousand dollars would be indebted to you he doesn't care about us it's all self-motivated the only reason he's being nice and singing a different tune is because he's in jail The only reason I was the number one soldier and the last man standing is because I have money. <laughs> if I didn't have any money, I would be right over there looking like Giuliano. I would have been asked to leave as well. Damn. Not Giuliano. Y'all are trying to break down. When he say Julie, I know he talking about Juju, the Ju Jizzle. A rape case. And you couldn't even defend a civil case when it came to landlord tenant. You lost a landlord tenant case. But you're sitting up here breaking down a rape case, which is a serious felony that lawyers charge $80,000 to even consider. To even get started, they're charging 30 to 100 racks, and you're trying to break it down as an unqualified lady off of the street. You couldn't even defend a civil case. Why are you now qualified to defend a serious felony, multiple felonies? There's reality, and then there's cults. And cults always exist outside of reality. But reality has a funny way of coming back to you. This is not a game. And I don't blame those women because I know what they got going on. They will eventually break that pattern once reality hits they have to if charles manson's family can break out of that being so convinced to kill somebody they can too it's not stupidity amarella it's not stupidity it's not and i know why you would say that because i considered it I considered myself to be stupid at one point as well, but it's so it's so much more because you got to think the people that came to the cult they joined for an intelligent reason. They joined for an intelligent reason. Later, slowly but surely, you got to understand it's different when you're in a. I can't I, I can't agree with that right there. I don't think that they joined the cult for an intelligent reason. I think that y'all joined the cult out of fear i think y'all joined that cult out of cowardness and of course non-acceptance you know within the reality that y'all was living in okay like straight up i think that the people that you all surrounded yourself with aside from the sex cult leader was simply people that you all could relate in to a foreign country it's di different when your survival mechanism is activated and then you're primarily operating from that state you will overlook certain things you will say certain things you will do certain things i'm not trying to make myself a victim don't excuse me for nothing i did don't excuse me for nothing i said i just want y'all to understand that it's a little bit more complicated than just being stupid and naive that's it that's all i'm saying don't excuse me don't don't pardon me don't do none of that whatever you feel about me i want you to be honest about how you feel because i know what it's like to be fake and i hate it um i thought about it you know i look at my son and i'm like 
if he were to ever get involved in something like this, bruh, like, I don't, I, my heart would be broken. You know, I can only imagine what, and based off what my family told me, what they was really going through, you know, um, me thinking I was 24 years old when I left. So that they, they just thinking that they wouldn't be, I guess that worried because I'm quote, I, you know, I'm, I'm so-called grown and um, just thinking that, you know, I was just living my life, you know, but now looking back on what I looked like, what I sounded like, what was happening. I, I know that my family, when they told me they couldn't even watch me, I know that the words was real. You know, I know that their feelings were very real. You know, I don't know exactly what they went through on a day-to-day -day basis, but I know that, you know, they, they struggled. I know that they were in a lot of pain. I know they suffered because if my child ever got involved in something like this, I, I don't even know how I'd be able to sleep. You know, I don't even know, <laughs> like, I would, would be heartbroken. You know, like, and then the, knowing that there's really nothing I can do until my child realizes for himself, like, I will just be broke <laughs> to a whole other degree. You can't just move forward. And you can't, like, it doesn't matter. Like, you don't have a child. Like, you don't remember your child being little and you know, taking care of them. And now they're saying these things and you know, it's not them. Like, I know my family looked at me in those videos and were like, that's not even her. Right. Like, who is that? You know, like, we don't even know who that is. They told me when I started losing so much weight, they couldn't even watch no more. And they're just like, I can't even look at you, you know, and how hard that must've been for them. If I can understand now, you know, being, having a healthy relationship with my child that, if my child was to ever be involved in something like this. And that's why I think, you know, it's very important to bring awareness because I think that maybe a lot of people think never could it be me or, you know, my family, um, but it very well could be because there's not really a target when it comes to what type of people get involved with these type of abusive people. It's not really, I mean, there's people like, all of us really you have families. All of us involved had families for the most part. Not not necessarily every single person, but a lot of us had families. My family in particular is a very close family. So, you know, so if you see my family today and you saw my interactions with my family today, you'd be like, why would you ever leave your family? You know, <laughs> what made you just block your family and never talk to them? You know, like what type of things were you going through where you really believe that these people were your lower self like what and so, so it's very possible for um, somebody with that level of manipulation to make you feel like you know your family is not who you think they are they're really against you pin them against you you know Tanisha's family um, when they reached out to her to help her while she was literally on her deathbed. Um, he pinned her against her family and told her that her family was her enemy. She didn't need to talk to them. She didn't need to, you know, accept anything from them, anything from them. He provided her, well, he got people to provide her with transportation, cell phone, food, housing all of that so that she would associate him with safety and security and not her family you know so it is it, like it goes deep because people would think well she was in new orleans why didn't she just go back with her family um he pl like planted these seeds in her mind that if she accepted anything from her family and he did it on live if she accepted anything from her family that her family would then expect her to you know, do what they wanted her to do. And, and she wouldn't be able to live her life how she wanted to live her life. When her family literally came out and said, we're not trying to control her. We're, we're trying to look out for her health. You know, we want her to be safe and healthy. 
just like any normal person is. You know, he's the only sick individual that thinks that people are after somebody because they want to control them. No, people are looking out for their family members because they want the best for their family. You know, since he didn't never experience that, he believes that people are only after control and power and money when that's what he's after. You know, so yeah, um, it, it's interesting, you know, knowing that we all, or a lot of us came from a lot of good families, you know, in my family probably never thought I would get involved in something like this, um, but it just was, you know, right, right time in my life. He got me at the right, at you know, or I should say the wrong time in my life where I just was at a crossroads and I said, well, let me make, I was at an identity, I had an identity problem at that time and I needed something to t attach to. Some people go to a religion. Some people, you know, get a new job. Um, some people move to a different place, start over. I happened to join what I thought was a movement of people that wanted to live in peace and harmony and holistic um, well-being and health, community, nature. Um, and it turned out that it was all a lie, you know. Um, but I didn't realize it till after five years that, that just, it just happened that way. But, you know, it's definitely not a specific person that's targeted in these situations because I'm not a I'm not a small minded person. I'm not a um a weak person, but I think I am an empathetic person. Uh, I think I, I am a, a very compassionate person. So when this when this cult when the cult leader told me about, you know, all of the things that happened in his childhood and I sympathized with him. I I empathize with him. I I I felt like, wow, this person has been through so much. You know, I I looked at him as, you know, someone that was genuine. At one point, you know, um, it's crazy. I was talking to somebody that was also involved in the cult, uh, and. I, I told and I was like, you know what was so crazy is just the fact that I thought he was this normal guy. Like <laughs> he was just walking around like he's this normal guy. Like I just thought he was normal. It's like it kind of just crept up, you know? Everything just kind of crept up. And you know, from the outside looking in now, I look at him and I'm like, oh, he looks crazy. But that's because I know now that he is crazy, but I think even some people that were online just watching him and viewing him over the screen were a little bit, you know, tricked into believing that he was actually just a normal guy or maybe even a real, a real man, like he was saying, oh, I'm a real one, I'm a real one, you know, I think that, you know, me never really knowing anybody with that type of personality, I thought, oh, maybe he's just a real one, maybe he just come from the streets and that's just how he is. Um but nah. I've, nah. I've noticed, I've noticed that people's over assertion to, to convince people of what they are is usually grounds for confirmation that they are not. You rarely see people who actually have money feel the need to tell anybody that they have money or make overt displays that they have money. And looking back, him constantly trying to suggest that, oh, I'm a real dude, or I got a big heart, or I'm this and I'm that, is re really an indication that he's not. Because when somebody is f actually something, then you see it in their embodiment and the expression of their actions. I realized that the cult leader relied heavily upon his ability to use words, but when you start to notice that his words didn't align with his actions, you began to pay more attention to his actions as an appropriate means to determine who he actually was. See, that's when you then got a question like, why did they, why did they stay for so long? Like if they noticed the stuff, if they recognize that 50 definitely wasn't a person that he portrayed to be, why did they listen to him? 
Now, Sheba is different. Kendra is different because she said, you know, she didn't know anybody in her life, you know, that was from the streets and stuff. So the things that 50 Nature Boy was saying, you know, it was believable to her. And she thought, you know, for whatever reason, that it was practically normal. To me, it wasn't normal at all. It's some stuff that if True recognized, if he detected as being a man first and foremost, he should have been in refutation of that being that he wasn't and, and he continued to allow for the shit to take place for as long as what the hell that it was or that it did hell that just pretty much seemed like that he condoned it like he wanted to be a part of it he wasn't in refutation of it then now after 50 got locked up this is the stuff that we was hearing not when he was out because they pretty much start the same damn thing when he was out i think they may have been for whatever reason they might have been afraid to even express that and just do, you know, sheer cowardice alone. That's what kept them there. I wish they would just come straight out with it and just say what it is. I wish they would just say, hey, you know, I thought that he was going to whoop my ass. I thought that he basically was going to put my ass in the figure four. I thought that he was going to choke slam me and stuff. They could have came out and said any of that stuff. I would have been good with that. So one way after question, why do they continue to tiptoe around this shit? Aaron True then came to the chat several times, okay? And even the several times when he didn't drop a damn comment, that one time that he dropped the comment showed and then proved, and this was at the time of his 99-cent book that he was propagating. We would have thought that he would have went on uh, to writing more books or becoming more uh, explanative when it came down to the horrors, the trauma associated with the sex code, but now nah, he didn't want to do that. Nah, so now he done hop back on Bigo. So I don't want to have to, you know, just play your material, your content when you just went back on Bigo because you said all this stuff, you know, when you and Sheba was together. You know what I'm saying? It's like you uh, was alleging that you was in Georgia. She alleged that she was back home with her family with baby John. Boom, that was it. You know, we thought that it was a wrap after this right here. Like y'all done been on like several content creators pages, which I do understand, you know, with continuing to promote your brand and stuff, you know, after the fact. But we pretty much, we kind of thought it was done for. We thought that was a wrap. We thought that you would be ghost. And of course, you would have then, as we would have believed, went on to doing other stuff with your life as opposed to, once again, going back to the same shit. Because the memory of Bigo that Aaron Dixon should have, what Kendra Carter should have, uh, Armand Palmer, anybody who at one given time was a part of the sex cult, that memory is something that you should distance, distance yourself from. Now, one would have to ask, aside from what Aaron Dixon said in reference to having money and receiving a check, we had the brother Hebrew, the neighborhood Hebrew came through and explained everything that had to do with VA benefits and stuff. You got a question now on whether or not if Trues, if his if his if his VA benefits, you know what I'm saying? If that shit done ran the hell out, if he's not receiving it anymore, and if he went back to the Bigo apps just to get at Brandon Keys, he went back to the Bigo app, you know, for the sake of getting some bread. You know, if that was just it. And if that's the case, if he's tapped out. Why didn't he just go and then get some employment? Why? I mean, knowing that he has a son, why now is he trying to get on Bigo? Would he be a host up under Brandon Keys? Because people alleged just the other day that he was talking to Brandon. Now, him and Brandon had a conversation. And remember the stuff that Brandon was citing in reference to looking out for the cult members or at least looking out for the sex cult leaders' wives while he was incarcerated. I don't know how far that that went. I, I, I don't fucking know because shit really have to make you scratch your head when you start thinking about Nate Terry even being in North Carolina. And that's where the Brandon Keys do. You know, he's staying Rafer. Rafer from Fayetteville ain't, hey, I'm just putting it out there for what it's worth. Like straight up, Sanford, all those areas around there. You know what I'm saying? It ain't that far, you know, in distance and driving and stuff. It don't take hours and stuff, yeah, to get the one particular part, you know, in North Carolina, unless that, you know, you on the coast and then you all the way in a damn Piedmont or something. But that's not the case at all. So with True being back on Bigo, you know, and him not just 
going all the way in and explaining what the hell that happened. What the fuck is the reason and who should even be listening at this point? Like, I'm so serious. If you can agree, and I'm not even, I don't have your arm turned around your back. I'm not forcing you to put anything in the comments, but if you agree, yes or no, does this not have everything to do with sunflower and sunflower exposing pure and the characteristics of the carbonation characters that's what i'll call them characters because anybody that's done ran from that beam <laughs> you know what we're gonna label them as and you seen how easily armand had a conversation like it was nothing i didn't even really want to go in talking about the coat he mentioned certain stuff but if you avoid me that means that you still protect the nature boy. So what is it with this protecting thing? Like, does anybody else, would you like to speak? Would you want to answer some questions? Or do you, I mean, or is it just simply that you have something to hide? Because at this point, that's the way that I'm viewing it. If you're done with the code, you're done with the code. If you want to explain, you can explain. If not, we're just going to continue to fuck this shit up because we got more uh, than enough fucking videos to be able to dig through with things that have been said. And a plus and in plus things that we question, it's up for scrutiny at this point. Matter of fact, it's been scrutinized for years just because we knew who was in fact the leader of the damn cult. And, and the people that's connected to the cult, we knew that they after or if something happened to him, that they would continue to go on and then push the message of the cult. But you seen how differently that went. And I'm guessing for lack of money, this is why things are the way that they are. Now, we haven't heard an official statement after all of this stuff from Kendra thus far. So who knows what her life is like. But now, you, you got True back over there on Bigo. So, yo, shit, hey, boy, I'm trying to tell you, boy, shit has turned all the way the fuck up at this point, man. Like, <laughs> I'm dying laughing. And no, we will not be playing that video. I don't even see a reason to. Like, to be honest with you, I just don't. What is it that he will have to say now that he didn't discuss within the four hour Instagram live stream that him and Sheba was on on Instagram? If he were to ever get involved in something like this, bro, like, I don't, I, my heart would be broken. You know, I can only imagine what, and based off what my family told me, what they was really going through, you know? Um, me thinking I was 24 years old when I left, so that they, they just thinking that they wouldn't be, I guess, that worried because I'm quote, uh, you know, I'm I'm so called grown, and um, just thinking that you know I was just living my life, you know, but now looking back on what I looked like, what I sounded like, what was happening. I know that my family, when they told me they couldn't even watch me, I know that them words was real. You know, I know that their feelings were very real. You know, I don't know exactly what they went through on a day-to-day -day basis, but I know that, you know, they, they struggled. I know that they were in a lot of pain. I know they suffered because if my child ever got involved in something like this, I would. I don't even know how I'd be able to sleep. You know, I don't even know, <laughs> like, I would, would be heartbroken, yeah. you know, like. But it's not out of the ordinary. Just as parents who play sports or pursue athletics, their children rightfully normally so on an innate level would do the exact same damn thing unless that they had been taught otherwise or if they seen something else that caught their attention it's not something that i'm wishing or hoping for and at an early age that baby job was a part of the carbonation sex code hopefully he's able to gradually forget those things because shit it's stuff that i remember as a child but i don't remember every damn thing you feel me? So and hopefully they're able to continue through preoccupation to keep him, you know, doing other stuff so that he isn't reminded of the time that he was there. But just think it could be certain songs, movies and even words 
that may even activate the child back into that mind state. That's why the importance of obliterating coats is a must, man. We, we got to get it going because we don't know if baby John will be 15 or 16 years old and have a flashback of 50 and stuff that 50 did just from him seeing some man, uh, you know, in society and shit with his shirt off and stuff. He might just blank out. He see somebody with their shirt off with some black jogging pants on knowing the way how Nature Boy was manipulating the situation when he was held as a hostage, to tell you the damn truth, in 2993 Arbor Chase, he may just lose his damn mind because, after all, Nature Boy is not his father, but was with his mother, who he had to sit back and watch be with him, while as, you know, whereas his father, you know, was with him, he was watching him and stuff. That child was confused off of the gate because he was like, wait a minute, something ain't right. And Benny, he hadn't went to public school, hadn't even went to pre-K, hadn't even been taught the dynamics, you know, just the essentials of basic learning, just the building blocks of learning in general to spark and to, you know, push more of a child's, you know, motor senses so that they can be able to use them as far as functioning well uh, within those classes, putting the blocks in, you know, certain shapes or whatever. Man, baby jaw was null and void of all of those things. And the only thing that he knew was the stuff that took place within the coat. And then the, knowing that there's really nothing I can do until my child realizes for himself like I will just be broke <laughs> to a whole other degree you can't just move forward and you can't like it doesn't matter oh, you definitely have to just move forward yeah you can do whatever that you want to do whatever that you put your mind to because after all being a part of a sex coat that had everything to do psychologically with a person's physical being held as an hostage okay straight up that's what they got to do with people that are involved in cook in coats man it's more mental than physical straight up the brainwashing is real so to rid yourself from the brainwashing yeah there are steps and stages there's a procession that takes place just like what you've seen with Armand palmer okay and the number one step would be realigning oneself back into society as he clearly stated what he was doing how he went about doing it he didn't go over all of that he don't even need to but just knowing that he's working he, he's in the right state of mind uh, he's level-headed that let you know we don't even have to worry about it like at all and for a person to have watched any of the segments and if a person had an attachment with any other members of carbonation you can't sit back and then play like these videos you've seen the live streams you've been a part of that there wasn't at least one of these people that you cared about because you know that you did straight up man you know you you know you cared about them it matter like you don't have a child like you don't remember your and it's crazy too when people on the internet like mama meat mama meat to me cared more about baby ja than both of these parents did <laughs> Just by the things that she would say when she would get up on the panel, we could be, man, we could be talking about Nature Boy feet uh, and the back of his feet being on um, like some cheap rawhide and stuff like some cheap leather. Yeah, like we can be talking about uh, 50 bunions and shit. You feel what I'm saying? Miss Mita always bring up baby jaw. It was always about baby jaw. Yeah. And I used to just just say like, damn, like have they totally disregarded something that they took part together for their existence to be on this earth. Are you serious? For something that Nature Boy is saying. Your child being little and, you know, taking care of them. And now they're saying these things and you know it's not them. Like, I know my family looked at me in those videos and like, that's not even her. Right. Like, who is that? Yeah. Oh, you know? yeah. Hey, oh, yeah. And I bet you when they did look at those videos that they said that that's not her, I bet you they ain't doing nothing but shake their damn head because they knew they ain't had no control because you see one thing you got to understand, Kendra and Aaron, you both are adults. You all just have became complacent when it comes down to being online. It, it, that's all that it is. True is just missing being online. That's it. That's all. And if he didn't, then he wouldn't be on there now. And if what I'm saying wasn't the truth, then we wouldn't have seen him be somewhat of a 
servant to nature boy listening to nature boy for years they all sit there as if that they you know didn't have a voice only by his command by the way that he wanted things to be so yeah he liked that shit you know like we don't even know who that is they told me when i started losing so much weight they couldn't even watch no more they shouldn't have as you shouldn't have even wanted to been a part of the code after you lost all that weight and your jawbone and stuff was looking like skeletal and they're just like i can't even look at you you know and how hard and you shouldn't even been wanting to look at yourself at that point hard that must have been for them if i can understand now you know being having a healthy relationship with my child that yeah if my child was to ever be involved in something like this and that's why i think you know it's very important to bring awareness because I think that maybe a lot of people think never could it be me or you know my family um, but it very well could be because there's not really a target when it comes to what type of people get involved with these type of abusive people it's not really I mean there's people like all of us really who have families all of us involved had families for the most part not not necessarily every single person but a lot of us had families. My family in particular is a very close family. So, you know, so if you see my family today and you saw my interactions with my family today, you'd be like, why would you ever leave your family? You know, <laughs> what made you just block your family and never talk to them? You know, like what? A man, 50 nature boy. That's the whole sole reason. And even though you had a child by the guy, you know, Aaron Dixon is pictured, you still was in love you still physically romantically you had an involvement with the sex cult leader and your family couldn't even understand it because they didn't even know who his rabbit dog in the face was and i'm sure at the time when they seen him i know they was like man ain't no way in the hell as if kendra didn't have enough role models in her life positive men in her life to ditch those men to throw them away to disregard uncles and cousins brothers even her father for that matter and accept somebody like the sex cult leader elysio bishop is beyond a smack in the damn face what type of things was you going through where you really believe that these people were your lower self like what and so it's very possible for um, somebody with that level of manipulation to make you feel like you know your family is not who you think they are they're really against you pin them against you you know tanisha's family um when they reached out to her to help her while she was literally on her deathbed um he pinned her against her family and told her that her family was her enemy she didn't need to talk to them she didn't need to you know accept anything from them anything from them he provided her well he got people to provide her with transportation cell phone food housing all of that so that she would associate him with safety and security and not her family you know so it is it, like it goes deep because people would think well she was in new orleans why didn't she just go back with her family um he like planted these seeds in her mind that if she accepted anything from her family and he did it on live if she accepted anything from her family that her family would then expect her to you know do what they wanted her to do and, and she wouldn't be able to live her life how she wanted to live her life when her family literally came out and said we're not trying to control her we're, we're trying to look out for her health you know we want her to be safe and healthy just like any normal person is you know he's the only sick individual that thinks that people are after somebody because they want to control them no people are looking out for their family members because they want the best for their family you know since he didn't never experience that he believes that people are only after control and power and money when that's what he's after you know so yeah um it, it's interesting you know knowing that we all or a lot of us came from a lot of good families you know in my family probably never thought i would get involved in something like this um, but it just was you know right right time in my life he got me at the right at you know or i should say the wrong time in my life where i just was at a crossroads and i said well let me make 
I was at an identity, I had an identity problem at that time and I needed something to attach to. Some people go to a religion. Some people, you know, get a new job. Um, some people move to a different place, start over. I happened to join what I thought was a movement of people that wanted to live in peace and harmony and holistic um, well-being and health, community, nature. Um, and it turned out that it was all a lie, you know. Um, but I didn't realize it till after five years that, that just it just happened that way. But you know, it's definitely not a specific person that's targeted in these situations because I'm not a I'm not a small minded person. I'm not a um a weak person, but I think I am an empathetic person. Uh, I think I, I am a, a very compassionate person. So when this when this cult when the cult leader told me about you know all of the things that happened in his childhood and I sympathized with him. I I empathize with him. I I I felt like wow, this person has been through so much. You know, I I looked at him as you know, someone that was genuine at one point. You know, um it's crazy. I was talking to somebody that was also involved in the cult. Uh and I, I told, and I was like, you know, what was so crazy is just the fact that I thought he was this normal guy. Like, <laughs> he was just walking around like he's this normal guy. Like, I just thought he was normal. It's like it kind of just crept up, you know. Everything just kind of crept up, and you know, from the outside looking in now, I look at him and I'm like, oh, he looks crazy. But that's because. I know now that he's is crazy, but I think even some people that were online just watching him and viewing him over the screen were a little bit, you know, tricked into believing that he was actually just a normal guy or maybe even a real, a real man, like he was saying, oh, I'm a real one, I'm a real one, you know, I think that, you know, me never really knowing anybody with that type of personality, I thought, oh, maybe he's just a real one, maybe he just come from the streets and that's just how he is. Um... But nah. Uh, nah. I've noticed I've noticed that people's over assertion to to convince people of what they are is usually grounds for confirmation that they are not. You rarely see people who actually have money feel the need to tell anybody that they have money or make overt displays that they have money. And looking back him constantly trying to suggest that oh i'm a real dude or i got a big heart or i'm this and i'm that is re really an indication that he's not because when somebody is f actually something then you see it in their embodiment and the expression of their actions i realized that the cult leader relied heavily upon his ability to use words but when you start to notice that his words didn't align with his actions, you began to pay more attention to his actions as an appropriate means to determine who he actually was. And that's one thing that I feel like eventually runs its course in a cult leader's mind, in a, in a cult member's mind, or even in a regular relationship. You tend to just begin to lose value and what that person's saying and you begin to be more aware of what they're doing if i keep saying baby i love you baby i love you baby i love you but my actions say i don't care about you over time baby i love you just doesn't do what it did in the beginning and i think that that was a major part of me as well as other people leaving the cult and really being able to see the cult leader for who he was because you can't deny his actions regardless of how grand his statements were. And that's one thing I, I, I feel like is going to really be the nail in the coffin as far as his case is concerned. Because no matter what you type on a piece of paper and no matter what you try to say online in a phone conversation, 
we are going to be able to examine your actions to determine the nature of your character. And that that's that's a that's a thing that I hope people apply not just to this situation, but in their lives. Because when people really love you, they don't have to tell you. <laughs> they don't have to tell mm -hmm. you. T telling you is kind of like just a little sprinkle in conjunction with how much and how well they show you. And if somebody's <laughs> real, they don't have to affirm that to you. You're going to reach that. They're so confident that they're real that they know you're going to eventually reach that conclusion. Malcolm, Martin Luther King said, I had a dream. He didn't say, I, I'm a good person. Malcolm X never said, I'm a good communicator or a good speaker. He just did it. So the cult leader and as well as the cult, cult members have this huge fascination with trying to convince people of what they're doing because we're really not doing nothing mm -mm. that we're saying or, or that we're demanding you to do. And the irony about the greatest irony about carbonation is that the very thing that we were trying to preach to other people is things that we actually needed to do. Anybody that loves themselves don't have to keep making it a reminder. Mm. Who are you trying to convince? The people or yourself? Mm. I love myself should have been an action more than it was a repetitive statement. And what's up with the victimization? I feel like, you know, when, when I first went out to join the 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 cult, I I didn't know I was joining a cult, but I remember one thing that really um gravitated me, it really pulled me towards the group, and that was that we weren't victimizing ourselves. We were saying, you know what, this system is not what we want to be part of. It's not about yeah, the exactly. fact that the white man this and the white man that. It's just about separating ourselves and creating something new, creating something not necessarily new, but different outside of the system. You know, like we don't have to bash the white man. We don't have to attack the white man. All we need to do is separate ourselves. So I thought that was very honorable because um i was at that point i was i had a lot of i think um anger or misunderstanding for white people so uh, i remember like you just white people i used to see i used to get irritated like oh i'm you know i used to just i thought that you know i was on this like black power you know white people are the devil type thing and um so when he when I, you know, when I was introduced to this whole, like, no, everything is a mirror, it's a reflection, and you, everybody should, you know, everybody deserves love. I thought, well, that, that's empowering, you know, I can let go of this anger and this hatred that I have for white people. You know, over time, you know, going forward, I realized that now we're screaming about white supremacy, and now the white man is dead and the white man is that and enslaved us and i thought we enslaved ourselves i'm just so confused on why we're bashing white people now you know and when the police you know was doing wellness checks we were like oh they up in our business it's the white man always in our business like no these people are doing their jobs because we're causing issues in the community it's like there was no accountability and everything just turned into victimize this, victimize that. But the main thing that we were preaching was no one's a victim. You're in charge of your reality. You are God, take accountability, be responsible for your actions and your, how you respond to life. Meanwhile, everything that was being said about us or when people would respond to us and when the authorities would respond to us, we were always is the victims and i and, and it was like and that's just a reflection of him because he never i mean i mean never was an issue in any of his relationships he never says i was the issue i had a drinking problem i had a problem with putting my hand on these women i had an issue with going and sleeping with hundreds of women i had this issue it was never his problem you know like it was always someone else and when people say things like, oh, he has potential to change, I say absolutely not. Absolutely not, he doesn't, because he shows no potential to change, because he shows zero accountability ever. And the, and the only times where I've seen him show 
accountability was to manipulate and he would cry he literally would shed tears like i'm so sorry i did so wrong only to then turn around and do it again or do something even worse like it, it this is not a this is the person who literally knows how to manipulate people he was in a psych war well if that's true he was literally in a crazy house you know he knows how to manipulate the situation and it's amazing it's amazing to me looking back now and just thinking about how things switched you know over time to oh we don't believe in this to now this is what we do the so there's so many contradictions so much you know it was just you know, the, oh, you know, um, won't ever be no, I won't ever bring no transsexuals here because that's not natural. Next thing you know, there's a transsexual here. It's like, what? What? It, and then, uh, then, then you had the smoke doesn't belong in the body, but we're smoking, not not just marijuana, but we're smoking black and miles. And we're smoking them every day. And multiple times a day we're going to get packs of black and miles asking for donations but these donations are going to what we built nothing and we built years, nothing it and it makes me yeah. so angry to think about everything this person took and built nothing i mean literally doesn't have a dollar to his name and you're complaining about being left in jail without any money dude how much money did you get over this span of time you were saving nothing there's no how can somebody way. how can you build a sustainable village and you're not even sustainable in your own self not at all at all literally nothing to show for it and i remember th in mexico it was so hard for me to leave he, he even told me well just stay here then because i was pregnant and we had just built these gardens we had just it was like we it was like this house was my home Th that that land that was our my home and he and he got scared because the police came and he's like we have to go and i'm like bro we just literally were starting a garden like we were just starting to grow food like i'm just supposed to leave abruptly with no plan nowhere to go six months pregnant are you serious and he's like we'll just stay here then and i'm just like well obviously i don't have a choice but it's just like from that day forward, we built nothing. Hmm. We definitely gonna be breaking this up right here within segments. Uh, not only will there be continued receipts that will be produced, but trust and believe me, the commentary too, that go along with it, because I definitely gotta reach out to y'all. I made my posts on Instagram for anybody that's interested that want to share their thoughts. It's similar to the way that we have panels on StreamYard, but we're going to do the IG group thing and within the IG group because I just feel like that, you know, that is some other shit about to take place. And for the subscribers, for the people that support the network, for the people who want to just tap in and, and just give their perspective on everything. I think it's a few of y'all that's on Instagram that ain't tapped in with the team, you feel me? So I definitely will be reaching out. I might even add y'all. You know, nobody has the cam up unless that you want the cam up, okay? It's 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 not obligatory. And just know within the group, you know, once that we cover a certain topic, that certain topic will be what we discuss. We just going in, okay? Like straight up, ain't no time limit on that thing or none of that. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah you know and like i say for the sole sake of the premier purpose that's why i'm doing it just to be able to cut down on time but to still be able to provide legitimate content throughout the course of the day so if you're interested definitely tap in with me <laughs> because i don't know how many times that i even be on this motherfucker like live and shit you feel what i'm saying i might not be live but i'll be able to drop these premieres and stuff so if you got a perspective if you want to get it in you might want to hit me up man so we can go ahead and then arrange a time and with these discussion groups too i don't even have to be present you know even if it's y'all that just want to kick it you know just talking about a excuse me a specific subject that's cool too because we'll stream that as well as long as we stay on subject with what we talking about because we're not going to be in the group chat you know doing a build you know on true and then it go all the way into i stomped my toe last week and stuff you feel where i'm coming from and shout out to the chat once again
So tap in with me on the gram, man. This is the IG right here, man. You definitely can hit me up, like I said, if you're interested. And like I said, my name got the two underscores behind the 2020. So definitely tap in with me, okay? And you already know what it is, man. Definitely tap in with me on the next premiere. You already know when it drops. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be putting it on the community wall. So those posts on the community wall definitely will keep you on point and keep you updated throughout the day. I'll make an attempt to be able to post uh, once again so you will know which direction that we're going. And shout out to everybody that came through yesterday too for the Queen of Birth, the Queen of B birthday mix, because it was exclusively lit. Thanks for everybody that shared the video, everybody that smashed like on that as well. I see you guys once again. Shout out to the goddesses, the being goddesses at that. Shout out to my brother, man, Kulu Live Discussions, King Trey Joes, man, the entire being moderators, uh, Sunflower, uh, everybody that's up in the building. Uh, shout out to Cody Grace, man, it's nothing. Nick Nubian, uh, Mo Cherokee, uh, TT Show Enough, you already know what it is, man. Uh, Debbie, shout out to Debbie. You feel me? All of the supporters, everybody who usually here that's tuning in and that enjoy the live this motherfucking network. Oh, and don't think this shit sweet, cause we still on your top too. You just ain't worth really to be discussing. But as I told people before, whenever that I got time, I definitely will roast Gay Row. Uh, there's nothing to talk about concerning Gay Row, but I will roast Gay Row, cause after all, I've been calling him Gay Row for quite some time now, and I'm pretty sure now people see that he is, in fact, young Gay Row. You like this lifestyle we're living Getting in tune with mother nature Download these light codes that I've been given Put into action, they could save us Always giving all that we got From my heart, I love myself You're my reflection, I thought I'd tell ya Separation's an illusion I am you and you are me Let's stop fighting one another If we embrace what makes all us different Love is understanding each other 